afternoon everyone nice to join you on here again it's been some time since we've been on here but I'd, I'd just like to say that uh, today Tom my son is going to be asking some questions uh, to my guy Jonathan so we hope you enjoy that um, also I'd just like to mention that we've got some events coming up some demonstrations this month in September so on the Friday the 13th of September we have Kings Heath National Spiritualist Church in Birmingham will be there then on Tuesday the 17th of September we will be at the Five Wentz Hall in Swanley in London um, and the last one of uh, this month will be at Dawlish Spiritual Awareness Church on the 22nd of September and if you look on the site, uh, we'll be given the times of those uh, demonstrations, what time they start. Um, I can't actually see it on here, but um, we'll be able to sort that out for you if you uh, get in touch with Lucy. Okay, and that, that would be probably on the website, which is elainethorpe.com. Anyway, we shall get started. Um, I'd just like to say... To everyone on the the patreon and all of our um, followers on here thank you so much for your support and putting your time aside to uh, to join us on here because it means a lot to us and of course a lot goes into it we do like to give something back to the community so uh, we hope you enjoy it today and uh, hopefully there'll be more to come in the future all right so I'll leave it with you Tom to ask any questions? Any questions you got for me before we start? No, nothing before we start. Okay, well, we'll go into it then. Good afternoon, everyone. I am happy to be here. Afternoon, Jonathan. Afternoon, sir, yes. Well, thank you for joining us. Oh, it's just my pleasure. Um, I'd like to ask you some questions today um, about your ego, if possible. Oh, go ahead, sir. I am waiting with bated breath. Um, so the first question is, um, what happens to our ego when we pass? Um, does it disappear straight away or do we have to let it go? In some cases it will disappear straight away. It depends on whether or not it is the entrance into heaven to stay or whether or not it is a near-death experience. For instance, in some near-death experiences they are wishing to go back and if their body is in a state of uh, limbo then we may say, well, it is. it might be time for you to join us in some cases 
in a miracle they are sent back if the body is able to hold on to their soul and it is not too much of a uh, I would say if it is an injury as, a, as a, an example that it is not too far gone in order for them to go back to their body so that is that is in the situation where you are in a near-death experience but when one passes over the ego is going it is going to be let go of yes okay um <laughs> when you said about near-death experiences we often see people's personalities change when they come back from that have they undergone um like the process of losing their ego they don't no they don't lose it in the earthly sense because once you come back here in the physicality you still have the ego you still have the emotions that are taking place within your ego world for instance if somebody is going to upset you you will still get upset so to speak so you still have that emotional ego but you are thinking along different lines of what you thought previous to the near-death experience so, for instance, if one was an atheist before a near-death experience, they would think very much differently when they had returned from that near-death experience back to the earth. And they would see life differently, and it would change them, yes. They would still have the ego, though, yes, it, uh, because it is an earthly thing. Um, we, all, we all carry our dislikes around with us. Um, does all our dislikes and hates disappear? I, I know that's related to the ego. Um, when we pass yes they do because they are only earthly subjects for instance if you were going to uh, dislike someone in life and not be able to forgive them for something that they may have carried out against you then forgiveness would be completed in the spiritual world you would not need to hate them anymore whereas in this world you can only see things at face value so everyone that has been a perpetrator is then forgiven on the other side in their aspect of looking at it, yes. Okay. Um, one thing I noticed <coughs> at the live demonstrations that we do, a lot of spirits come back to apologize to their loved ones um, for things they did while they were on, in the, on the earth. Uh, does that help them progress? It does help them to progress, yes. But I would say it doesn't make them a bad person in the spirit world, the bad soul. What it is is to help the other person on the earth to let go of the hatred or the resentment that they are holding on to. And so therefore, if, if the human is going to forgive that person, then it will also help them move forward in their lives. So it's not only helping the, the soul, it is helping the person on the earth to let go of that anger and resentment that they have been holding on to. Okay. Um, are we born with an ego or is it something we develop? I would say it is mostly what you develop through earthly conditioning, through your parentage, through your surrounding situations that you are listening to on a daily basis. And, and as you are young, as you are a baby, the ego is not so much prevalent. It becomes more existent uh, uh, in the first trimester of life. Once one starts to learn how to speak, what they have heard in the womb is going to make a difference. But I would say once one learns to speak, one starts to become a little more conditioned, you see, in life. And that is when the ego really does start to develop. Yes. Okay. Um, do spirits have to find an ego to come back and communicate with us? Um, would you have to find... We, we don't need an ego. We, we would just say things as we felt that they are, or they were, or they're going to be. We, we don't judge, you see. So we would say, if we were going to say that, for instance, a person had been a, a little selfish to another, that would be that we are dis describing their ego behavior from, from the earthly point of view. But we would not judge them, so we don't have this ego. Okay, thank you. Um, that's all the questions I have, but if you have anything else you'd like to say on that subject. Yes, but I would say that the humans are always going to have an ego. From when you come into this life and you get to a certain age, and when you start to go th all through life, it is an earthly emotional aspect of you. But it's not an aspect of the soul, it's an aspect of the soul's learning and human form. So, so therefore, 
an ego is only the earthly thing that you carry with you. And it does teach you things in life about who you are, and it does teach you things about how to be towards people. It also teaches you forms of unconditional love. So you may think, well, how foolish is that? Is an ego? An ego is kind, an ego is irritant, an ego is anger. All of the different emotions that you experience are part of the ego. Now, most people would say, well, is an ego a, a big-headed person? No, it isn't. It isn't. And is an ego someone who has an inflated ego? So if, if they had an inflated ego, are they showing off? Or, or are they loving themselves and appreciating themselves for their abilities and therefore having confidence with those abilities? and therefore not worrying about what people are thinking. So you could look at both sides of the story, couldn't you? You could ha have a judgment from the ego for this other person that you are seeing as an inflated ego. So I, I would say, well, think about it before you might say it, of course, because they may be just expressing themselves and, and loving themselves and being confident within themselves in order to express themselves. So it's not always an inflated ego. Sometimes people will do that in order to, to get attention in life because they're wanting to be loved, they want this attention, they haven't given themselves self-love, so this ego becomes something that, well, if I grab the people's uh, attention, maybe they will take note of me and they will love me, you see? So there, there are many aspects to egos, many, because they're all different expressions of different emotions, and they all come under that category of ego. So it's something that you will always have in human form, this ego. It's nothing that uh, is, is an evil thing, it is a good thing. It is part of the experience of the physical life, you see. And that is how you learn, because if you didn't have all these emo emotions based upon the ego, then you would not learn anything about unconditional love. And unconditional love is not always fairies and lights, I can tell you. There are tests within unconditional love, because you see through people's what you see as faults, and then you learn to look past them. But it also depends again on the severity of their behavior and whether or not you can look past that, because not everybody can. But again, the spirit world will see past that, because they can see the reason why and that the soul has chosen to experience those greater deaths of the angry ego or the, the, the criminal-like ego, one might say. So we are not here to judge anyone, you see? We're not here to judge anyone. And one might say, sometimes in certain situations, you can look past that ego coming from you and learn to let go of the ego coming from that person that is uh, somewhat upsetting to you or annoying to you. So all of these different experiences all count for your soul's growth, you see. You come here to experience every single emotion, anger, elation, happiness, sadness. It doesn't matter what emotion it comes under. It is an emotion. It is based upon the ego. And that is what I shall say about the subject. I, I would think that there would be many more things to explain, but we would be here all day. <laughs> and I know that you haven't all day, but that, that is some of the explanations of ego. And no matter how much you see yourself as fault, always look upon it as your soul's growth, your soul's journey, that you had chosen to go through either or either. You see, you can turn those, that word around, you see, and make it two different sounds. But I, I would say to you, going back to that ego subject, look past some of it and know that everything is for a perfect reason, but you cannot see that. You cannot see it. Look past the face value of it if you can and see the greater depths of a person's ego behavior. You see, before you judge them, do you know their life? Do you know who they are? Do you know what is happening with their emotions in life if you do not know them? How have they been brought up? You see, people will only go by 
family values or their own values. And if another is against those values, then that ego again comes into it with judgment, and that's an ego. So every single emotional behavior of yours is included in that ego. So let go of the negative if you can. Let go of it. Because it's not worth holding on to. I do hope that helps you and answers the, the question. Yeah, that has. Thank you. Um, and if anyone else has any questions on this subject, um, please put them below. And maybe we can revisit that. Um, so thank you, Jonathan. Oh, you are most welcome. Yes. I, I should like to do a, a live question and answer, sir, when you have the time. I know that your life is, is quite busy at this present time, but yeah. it, I think it, it is a wonderful subject and that it gives people a chance to put their questions forth. So, you know, I, I don't expect it straight away, but it's just in order to help the people and to help you too. So I am only too happy to be here. Yeah, we are planning to do that on a more regular basis um, coming up. So yes, that would be wonderful. Something to look forward to. It certainly um, is. All right, thank you, and we'll see you again soon. God bless you all.